Howdy partners, it's your boy here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and we have the Fate Channel at last. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. I'm pretty sure everyone expected there was going to be a Fate Channel, so I already watched it. I took a look at what they had in store, and man, they dropped some pretty good bits of info here. So we're going to start over here with the Summer Celebration. We already knew about this from the data mine, because we saw the mission rewards that were in there. But just as a quick summary, we're getting 110 of every flower, 555 Divine Code 3s, 550 Heroic Rails, and then 55 Sacred Coins. If you're wondering why all of these numbers have 5s, that's because it's the 5.5 year anniversary of Fey. So they want to just be cheeky and shove the number 5 all over the place. They could have did that with the flowers too, like make it 550 of all the flowers. Or maybe even as a combined total, just just to get the number 5 in there, but whatever, it is what it is. Okay, then we're also getting these other rewards. I believe you gotta do these from clearing Aether Raid's quest, so that's not too bad. Two freaking orbs, dude. <laughs> do you see the theme here? There's there's a number 5 all over all these other rewards. Why, why couldn't there be 5 orbs? <laughs> why not enough orbs to do a summon? <laughs> this is not even like half of a summon. This is less than half of a summon, bro. Two orbs. That That's comedy. <laughs> that's just peak comedy. All right, 120 Ephemera 7 codes. We're getting a form of soul. That is a very good reward. I will give them credit for that one. Anytime they give these out for free, I'll definitely take them. All right, 555 feathers. I think this is also a little bit too low. They could have made that 5,555. Just because of how many you actually need to level up someone to 5 star. Alright, then we got 55 dues. That's really good. I know a lot of players are starving for dues because they just refine every unit. I personally just hang on to my dues and just refine units that I know for a fact I'm going to be using. Alright, then we have 5 stamina potions. We have 500 of these event aether stones. These are really good because you can use them to get the event structures which are exclusive. So you want to make sure you get all of these so you can get those exclusive goodies. All right, 500 regular Aether Stones and then five Dueling Crests. Okay. All right, so here's one of these structures you're going to be able to get. Or maybe that's the only one. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it looks pretty cool, though. It's basically Faye chilling out for summer and a, like, tropical version of the actual summoning plate there. So pretty cool. All right, what else do we got in here? All right, so we're getting these um, banner revivals, and each one of them is going to have a free summon, of course. So that's always really good. I love it when they do this, where they just drop rerun banners so we can just summon away every day and press our luck, see if we can manage to get something. It's not a bad idea to go for merges on one of these banners either, if you're specifically looking for one of these units. <laughs> like Fallen Julia, for example. Finally not color sharing with another red unit. So, shoutouts to Wylia there. I don't know if she's going to actually go for it, but, I mean, there's that. But mostly what I'm seeing here is just mostly, like, good fodder units, as opposed to units you would want to go for merges on. So, that, that's always good. All right, what else we got? Okay, the Grand Hero Battle Revival Quests. These are going to be the Grand Hero Battle Rerun characters. So, we, we already knew about the top four because they were in the data mine. I already said it, but Reeve is a really good one because he's free-to-play stall and he does it really well. And then Yenfei, I think most people already plus tend him if they were going to. <laughs> but just getting another copy there is really good if you haven't already done it. Then we're getting Hilda, Morim, and Lim Stella. These characters were not in the data mine to my knowledge, so these are going to be the other ones to fill out the event. Morim's a really good one. I actually really want to get him to plus 10. So getting another copy of him so soon after his release as well, and so soon after he was added to the Grail Shop is really nice. Limstella and Hilda both have pretty good perf weapons as well, so they're not too bad to go for merges on if you want to. All right, let's see what else we got here. Reward maps. Okay, we knew about this as well from the data mine. I think we saw seven, or we probably saw all of them, but the picture that Mr. Gengar posted only showed up to map seven. So we're going to have ten maps here. You're going to be able to play them on two different difficulties. So basically, a total of two orbs per map. So that's going to be 20 orbs for everybody. Pretty good. 
each map is only active for four days. That, I don't know why they couldn't just leave them all up during the whole event period, but okay, sure. All right, yeah, 20 orbs, like I said. Okay, so we're also getting this Hero Fest banner over here. Now, they finally killed the meme. We don't have Duo Ephraim and we don't have Sothis. So they're starting to make these Hero Fest banners look a lot more impressive now. So Moose Spell, Niffle, Ascended Legjarn, and Ascended Fiorm. Seems like a pretty good banner. I, not necessarily to go for merges on, I would say. Maybe Fiorm if you want to go to, for plus 10 on her. But her fodder is just way too valuable to really warrant using her for a plus 10. So I, I would just... Any copies of her you get are just going towards your other guys to give them Hardy Fighter and far save if you need it. That's what I would do with her. Legjarn's a pretty good unit to use, but she doesn't really score all that high, so not necessary to get merges on her. Moose Spell and Niffle are both really awesome support units, and they can fight pretty well also. Moose Spell does a lot of damage, and Domain of Flame is super underrated. But again, I wouldn't say either of these two are units you need to get to plus 10, so... I would say just use all of your tickets, sniping green, try to get Fiorm, because that's the most valuable thing on here. And I, I believe they said as soon as you log in, you're going to get 10 um, golden tickets to summon on this banner with. Let's see here, just to make sure. Yep. Okay, so as soon as you log in, the banner goes live at reset, by the way. So we're all going to get these tickets to summon on this banner at reset. I'm just going to snipe green and... Hopefully get my copies of Fiorm there. All right, 22 orbs. That couldn't be 55 <laughs> to celebrate the five and a half year anniversary. Okay, so here is the curveball of the Knights. We're getting a brand new theme of seasonal banner. I think the theme here is supposed to be, what is it, like thieves or something? Something about thieves and they're all dressed up like they're going to be doing a Broadway musical or something. You guys ever seen Cats the musical? Because <laughs> they're all dressed up like they should be starring in that show. But here we have Cat. Very, wow, this dude, this artwork is pretty juicy. Not gonna lie, they they actually made her look pretty good there. And Cat is one of the heroes that I've never really liked. I played Binding Blade, and Cat is just annoying to me. <laughs> but they, they have piqued my attention with this artwork. I will admit. So let's see what they gave to Kath. I believe we can take a quick glimpse of her passives after this attack here. Looks like she's going to be a Blue Tome Cavalry type unit. Alright, so here are her skills. She's got Attack and Speed Push 4. Looks like Attack and Res Snag 3. And then um, Blue Feud 3. And she has a Perf Weapon, Lofty Leaflet. And then she has Drawback for the Assist. She's got 39 HP, 51 attack, 46 speed, 21 defense, and 22 res. It's really tough to say what her weapon does. It could be giving her like a hard stat bonus somewhere. Probably plus 3 to speed, I would imagine. Because 46 neutral speed just does not seem right. So she's probably getting plus 3 speed from her weapon. As far as the rest though, th there's no telling what else her weapon is doing. So there you guys go. Alright, then we have... <laughs> a very cheeky Lila art there. Okay. Looks like she's playing with perfumes there. I actually like the masquerade look that they went with with her. Kind of reminds me of Mask the Mask from <laughs> Phoenix Wright 3. If you guys have ever played... Which one was 3? Was 3 Trials and Tribulations or Justice for All? I can't remember. It's been years since I've played Phoenix Wright, but... Mask the Mask is giving me some serious Lila vibes here, so shout outs to that. Looking pretty good though, like I said. I wonder if Morph FE is going to summon to get this Lila. Because he barely even scratched his orb count when he summoned for the other Lila. So he's probably going to be able to easily plus 10 her if he's even still playing the game. Alright, hold on. Did I miss her skills? Did we catch a glimpse of her skills? Let's see. Nah, they kept it conveniently hidden, so that kind of sucks. I don't know what the big secret is. They might as well just show them right here. <laughs> Very nice attack animation, though. Okay, then we have Soth up next. I, I don't like Soth at all. I'm the biggest Radiant Dawn fan and Tellius fan in the world. I, I don't even like this guy. 
He's one of my least favorite characters from the game, but I mean, it is what it is. He is the deuteragonist, I guess you could say, of Radiant Dawn. Giving off some serious demote energy, though. He's only got two passives and then an inheritable weapon. So if they stuck this guy as a demote, then I guess I'm fine with it. He's going to be a green dagger, and he's a flyer flying on a wyvern there. Florid knife plus, no telling what that does. Harsh command plus, that's actually pretty good to have on a demote. We got Swift Sparrow 2, and then we have Attack and Defense Rain 3, also pretty good for a demote. So, looking like a pretty solid fodder pull. You'd be able to get Harsh Command and the Rain 3 there. So, not too bad. 51 attack, 41 speed, 28 defense, 23 res, and 41 health. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't really jump off to me. I mean, let's be real. There's no way he's competing with the Summer Claude that we recently got, right? So... I mean, I guess it is what it is. Okay, and then we have this guy over here. Okay, so this is Rickard. I actually really like the artwork. <laughs> His neutral art just looks so happy. Look how happy this guy looks. <laughs> I love it. And he's got a bag of jewels. I guess he's a jewel thief. So, <laughs> shoutouts to Kaito Kid, if you guys have watched Detective Conan. All right, jewel thieves. Oh, we, we just barely caught a glimpse of his stuff. Let me see if I can pause it in time. All right, this is going to be tricky. I'm going to try my best, though. Okay, cat. Wow. I'm trying to have the cat-like reflexes like this guy, but unfortunately, I'm not a thief. So we got 38 HP, 52 attack, 47 speed. He's getting buffed by his C skills, so what does he have there? Oath? Is that Oath or is that Rouse? I believe that's Oath, right? Because he's a flyer. So, 52 attack. Oath is 5, right? So, 42 speed. 33 defense. 25 res. Florid Kane plus. He is a sword... What is he? Sword flyer. He's got shove. He's got flyer formation. And then speed and defense oath, I believe. Kind of a rip. He's going to be the Tempest Trial prize unit. Yeah, I'm not really feeling it too much. He, he does have pretty good defense, I guess. But... Yeah, it's really all just going to matter on how good his weapon is for fodder. He himself doesn't seem like he's going to be that special. Oh, wait, wait a second. He just used Kanto? Oh, does this weapon have built-in Kanto? That's interesting. Inheritable weapon with built-in Kanto. I wonder if Sot's weapon is going to have Kanto as well then. Like Kanto Rem? Okay, and then here we have our duo hero of the banner. I love this, by the way. They have the Yaoi book that Nina's reading right there and on wide open. It almost looks like Krom and Robin there, too. Like, the two males right there that we see holding hands. For some reason, that gave me Krom and Robin vibes. I don't know. Th this Nina must really love that, that duo Krom and Robin combo. But very good artwork. They are wearing skin tight. I cannot possibly imagine how much tighter these bodysuits could be. Because you can see like the outline of everything there pretty much. You can see their navels right through the bodysuit. I don't think that's possible if you're wearing clothes to see your belly button. So yeah, they, I don't know what the deal is with that. That's a trope in like all of these, these fan arts and like Japanese artworks. What is the deal with that? Like, wearing clothes and still revealing your belly button? Is that a thing? I don't know, because in real life, I <laughs> clothes do not work like that. But regardless, we have them. Alright, let's see what their skills are going to entail. Looks like Nina is going to be the front runner of the unit, and Kagero is going to be the backup. Alright, so they are a Cavalry Colorless Dagger type. And they have 38 HP, 54 attack, 43 speed, 18 defense, 32 res. They have lethality right out of the box, so that's really good. Shadowy Quill, no telling what that does just yet. They have attack and speed catch 4. They had a gold border B skill, bruh. Bruh, the meme is dead. They actually did it. And, of course, of all things, it had to be chill defense and res, right? <laughs> oh, my God. That, that is peak comedy, bro. <laughs> 
Wow, okay, so double chill. They, they know nobody gives a damn about double chills, so they're gonna make that be the first gold border beast skill, so people will... Of course, the whales are gonna summon for it, because they need it to score the maximum score. But as soon as they release an actual good beast skill with the gold border, that's gonna be replaced immediately. So they, they're just whale baiting with this right here, from what I can tell. And then they have Colorless Feud 3 for the C skill. Oh, who knows? I guess maybe the double chill level 4 could end up having a better skill. Like, we've seen this before on gold border passives where they gain a new effect. So maybe that chill effect will have something else besides the debuffs, and it'll be pretty good. Alright, there... Dude, this, this artwork is so happy. That smile. <laughs> He's killing me. Okay, so what else we got in here? All right, we're getting new arena maps. Nobody really cares. Five new maps. None of these look any different, really. It's just like the same old breakable structures, some walls. We got lots of trench tiles, mountains. Yeah, this doesn't really seem like it's going to change anything, honestly. The last time they did arena maps, it was pretty much the same concept here. These maps don't really look all that different. It's just for a change of scenery, I guess. Okay, then we're getting two new remixes. So we're getting Legendary Alm, and then we're going to be getting Naga as well. So he's getting Lunar Flash 2. Treats foes defense and res as if reduced by 20% during combat. Boost damage by 20% of unit speed. Oh, dude, during combat. Treats foes defense and res as if reduced by 20 during combat. Did, did it say that before? Was that how it worked before? I, I can't remember. That means you don't even need to trigger this special to be gaining the 20% reduction to the foe's defense. You could just fight and have this equipped, and you're gaining that bonus there. So that's really good. Boost damage by 20% of unit speed, and then neutralizes basically damage reduction from non-special skills. So th they made this significantly better than what it was before. Assuming the first part is a brand new thing and I'm not misremembering that. All right, and then he's gaining Times Pulse 3. Big RIP to people that already gave that to him. I think I might have gave it to him too. I'll have to double check, but see, that's the problem with these remixes. You never know what passive they're going to give to the unit. So you, you might end up giving them what you think is the best skill for them and then come to find out later, they end up just remixing them and giving them that same skill. So they're, they're killing us with the fodder there. All right, but th this weapon, we got to wait and see what his actual refine does for his weapon, because th this special is pretty strong. Having damage reduction, negation, it's a two-hit special as well, so it's it comes out faster than Deadeye does, and it's giving you more of a damage bonus than Deadeye would, so I, I think this could actually make this guy really strong, depending on his weapon. All right, and then let's take a look at Naga over here. So Divine Fang Plus, at the start of turn, grants effective against dragons to adjacent allies for one turn. At the start of turn, if unit is in two spaces of an ally, grants attack and speed up six, and the following status to unit and allies in two spaces of unit for one turn. If unit initiates, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up. Pretty strong, attack and speed up six, effective against dragons, and then guaranteed follow-up to herself and allies in two spaces. Quite good, man. And dragons have been on the rise lately. We've gotten a whole bunch of these really good dragon units. We have Ymir. We have um, Summer Niffle, who's really good. We have Medeus. We have Fallen Rhea. We got Legendary Murr. <laughs> this has been so many good dragon units lately that Effective Against Dragons could actually <laughs> come back into vogue. So... This is pretty cool that she's getting her remix now. And then they're also giving her Dive Bomb, which is awesome. I can't remember what B skill she had before this, but 100% Dive Bomb is going to be better than whatever it was. All right, who knows what her weapon does, but dude, I could actually see Naga being a really meta unit in Summoner Duels after her refine. Because like I said, dragons have been on the rise lately, and also she's a flying unit. So she can fly over obstacles, which is really good in most of the Summoner Duels maps. So if her refine is any good, then 
<laughs> Naga might actually end up being pretty good again. Alright, then we have these guys. These are going to be the next set of heroes scheduled for remixes. No telling what the ordering is going to be. I'm assuming they'll go from left to right here. So, probably Elliewood is going to go next, followed by Sothis, then Julia, and then so on and so forth. <laughs> Elliewood with his bonus doubler. This guy could end up being pretty awesome with his remix. Honestly, all of them could. They're all in a spot where they could have a lot to gain, really. Alright, then more heroes are going to be added to the weekly revivals. This Basically what this means is these characters are going to be on those freebie pull banners that happen every so often. And they're also going to stop being 5-star exclusives. So if you're summoning on a banner, you don't have to worry about getting pity broken by any of these guys. So that, that is good. I, I would say all of these units pretty much are no longer all that meta relevant. They don't really have the best of fodder skills either, so... I've been pity broken personally by Sirius on like every other banner it feels. So yeah, getting him out of there would be really nice. Let's see here. Oh, dude, Duo Ephraim as well. He's finally going to be out of the 5-star pool. So you'd be able to pull this guy as a 4-star now. That's pretty wild. But at the same time, I think it's fair game, right? Because like it's not that common that you're pulling these special rate 4-stars. So having him added to there I think is fair. Okay, and one final thing before we head out. We have this new mode called Binding Worlds. I'm not going to go too crazy in depth with this because obviously we got to play it to really see what's going on here. But from what I can gather, it kind of looks like a mix of um, form of Hall of Forms and then a mix of like some kind of co-op. Maybe not call it, maybe more so like rival domains, I guess, because you're able to use a friend's unit while you're playing in this mode. We can quickly play it and you'll see what happens. So if you have a unit stand on these special tiles here, after they perform their action, you're going to be given the option to swap in for one of these characters here. These are the set um, preset characters by other players of the game. So it kind of has like almost a little bit of a co-op vibe, but not really because it's not actual co-op it's more so like rival domains where you can just borrow a unit from a friend so pretty cool though i do like the idea of that and like i said um what should we call it hall of forms i think is one of the better modes that they've added because you just go in there with a batch of fresh units and build them up so it's fun to do that and i think this mode right here is going to be really fun to play especially with this feature here so it's going to be nice to see that come into play but they really do need to get on actually making a co-op mode instead of this. All right, there, there's going to be rewards here, just like um, Hall of Forms, basically. You play once a day, and you get these rewards here. And then there's also a reward bonus for clearing all the floors. So it, it goes up to 25 floors, just like Hall of Forms. So pretty interesting stuff. Can't wait for this mode to come out, because it does look like quite a lot of fun to play. It's coming out on the 12th there. And that was the last bit of info they had in the Spade channel. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of the brand new Thief banner over here? I think it's pretty cool. Definitely whale bait with these two though, having that gold border skill. But we will see. So that's all for now. This is your boy Tacho signing out. Hope y'all enjoyed it. And I'll catch y'all again on the flip side.